Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is a changing episode. I mean, this is My Little Pony, French Miss Magic, Season 7, Episode 17, even though the app said 19, to change a changeling. Ah, the light! I was just about to say it was dark in here and then our automatic lights kick on. Why must it burn? Why? Why must you be so overly dramatic? Because theater. That was how many years ago? Ouch. Just because I haven't done anything recently doesn't mean I still don't have a theatric heart. And now on to the episode. Yes, you go play with those uh, theatrical changelings. I'll be over here running the episode. So it was a fun episode. Though, it's kind of funny. We looked at this and... Ember says, okay, before everything starts... This totally matches a fanfic. This will totally match a fanfic. It didn't. But it was a good guess, because it was like, this random changing that still looks like an old-fashioned changeling kidnaps two ponies. He'll kidnap them, drag them off somewhere, and they'll reform him. Because, hey, why not? So that was my guess for the plot. That lasted all of 30 seconds when he dumped them out at the foot of Thorax's throne. Also this whole brother thing. So, this is kind of interesting. How many male changelings were there in this hive? And this is definitely starting to contradict the hive bugness of it. Because usually there's only like a couple of males and they breathe and die off. Yeah, and based on the design of Thorax's transformation concerning he looks like a freaking king stag fairy, that that would be the male leader or top male, whether or not the society is led by male or female, because bug societies, usually it's the queen in charge. There's a reason in human vernacular we call them queens. Mm-hmm. Usually the entire hive's female. And the only fertile one is one male and one female. Those two mate, the male dies off, and then the female continues to produce young after that point. Because it got the needed DNA from the male. This is completely different, though it does kind of lean itself more towards fae, because fae have kings and queens. But at the same time, with a hive design and the egg hatching and all of that, why are these two specifically brothers? Out of all the eggs that hatched at the time, we got the flashback of Thorax's hatching. Also, why is Benric's design a different coloration? If he's the only changeling left, why does he need to look different from any other changeling? So, he's the only changeling left and his color scheme is off from every other changeling. Why? As a design choice? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I think they wanted to make him a little bit more unique because he's also unique at the end. If you notice, he more matches Thorax's design than all the other changelings. Also, another thing going back to bug biology is the fact that all bees are sisters. Every bee in that colony is a sister to another bee. So technically, Everyone's brothers and sisters to Thorax and Finrax. Yes, that's what I was saying. Why specifically are these two brothers? And yes, when Finrax transformed at the end, I'm like, okay, they have to make him look a lot like Thorax because they've established these two are brothers. So I'm like, he has to be larger than the others and probably also have horns. Well, they also pointed out that he was in charge of a section of the changelings, specifically the patrol. He was the head of that section of the army. Yeah, so he had a very important job in the old hive. So I think they wanted that to transfer over to his new position as training of the defense force. So he's like the head captain underneath the king. Yeah, I like that he got to keep a darker coloring. Also, your changelings! Just change color. Yeah. During the whole scene, it's like, sometimes I feel like blue, sometimes I feel like pink. Well, you can change that. You're a changeling. Unlike us ponies, we're not stuck in one color. Like, you're not stuck in one color. You can instantly, on a whim, go, poof, I'm pink. Poof, I'm orange. Poof, what do you need? Poof, what do you need? <laughs> 
Cardboard boxes is what I need, apparently. <laughs> I, I just tripped over cardboard boxes. I'm leaving this in because it's funny. And I'm leaving out everything I could say. Oh, you mean, mean little girl. But back to the episode. Yes, because they still need to be able to defend themselves. Just because they're not going out hunting doesn't mean that there aren't still dangers out there. And this is why the Swiss has one of the most terrifying armies out there. You do not want to mess with the Swiss. They're neutral for a reason. They don't want anyone messing with them. Because they will mess you up. There's a reason they invented those little pocket knives. <laughs> I, I don't actually know if the Swiss actually invented the Swiss army knife. Because it's kind of like French fries. Yeah, the French didn't invent those. Yeah, and chop suey is not actually Chinese food, but moving on. I just thought I'd cover my bases there just in case. But back to the other army, or used to be army. Yeah, they're kind of rusty. And it would make sense for one of the older changelings, still kind of rough, even if he transforms to be the head of the new protection force. You don't even have to call it an army. No, defensive force, protective force, guardians. Mm-hmm. And since you're just defending, you're going to have to be better than everyone else out there. Because if you're just going to defend, you need to make sure your defenses are impenetrable. That means attacking them just as they're approaching you in such a lethal way that they go, we will never, ever mess with them again. Because it's the threat of how good you are is what your shield is. It's not an actual shield. It's the fact that they know that you can do amazing things with that shield. Oh, so I almost thought that they weren't going to have him transform. That he could have a place within the hive as an old style changeling. I think what happened there is, I think the changeling's transformation isn't just the fact that they're so full of love. is that they accept that they can be something different and accepting that permanently changes them well he changes right after he says i love the hive well everything he did was because he loved the hide ripping out the vines kicking holes into the walls was just being contrary because that doesn't make them more secure yeah that was just him going i like the old way yeah there were holes everywhere in the walls therefore i will kick holes in the walls but he had a good point with the vines and the terrain and the fact that they weren't patrolling and that they weren't doing anything to drive this dangerous creature away. Though, if it's eating plants, how dangerous is it really? And then you think about hippopotami. Mm -hmm. I think it's also the fact that it looks like changelings are now eating vegetables and other stuff. So maybe they're trying to start a garden and this thing's eating their food supply now? Well, they were saying that, that it was eating the food and trampling the terrain. But why wasn't Fenrix, like, starving? Because we saw Thorax starving when he was first introduced. Well, maybe there's enough ambient love in the hive now that he can kind of sustain himself off of that without having to actually directly suck love off of other creatures. Yes, and the dynamic between Trixie and Starlight and, like, oh, yeah, we're outcasts, so we can totally get him and understand him because we're all outcasts. We know what it's like to not fit in. Yeah. You guys had him until you admitted that you reformed your ways. Then he's like, you guys are just losers. We're not losers. We lost, but that doesn't mean we're losers because we came back and we're stronger than we were before. Because failure, if taken right, makes you stronger. But yeah, them just going, oh yeah, we can totally do this. You have how much experience with changelings and how much experience with helping other ponies through this situation? Not much. And Starlight, you're very, very intelligent. Why is your idea to lead the monster to the changelings to put them in danger? Because what was going to happen if Ferenx didn't show up and or if he lost, you just put the entire hive in danger to try and save one person within the hive. I think Starlight is still learning from her past. She still thinks attack and overpowering and all that stuff. She also is very self-reliant, so she thinks other people are very self-reliant and do stuff, big stuff on their own because of how she was able to do something so big on her own. And she's still trying to learn that Working with others is a good way to solve problems, especially when you're working towards 
giving someone information on how to change themselves for the better because she's still very in her head. She still thinks that I can do this. I am powerful enough to just force this person to do this and not just giving them enough information to lead themselves in that direction. Because he could have possibly run into the creature even without Starlight having changed the trail, depending on which way he flew when he left the hive. You could have also let it out away and then found him and brought him back by saying that it was heading towards the hive, but not actually have it head towards the hive. Yes, a little bit of deception instead of actual danger. And I like how Thorax kept reiterating that he was not okay with what Starlight did. That he was being assertive about that. That, what were you thinking? This is all your fault. Because, yes and yes. But you have to admit that sometimes it works out for her, and sometimes it doesn't. But that's not a risk that she was entitled to take. Because it was an entire hive. Yes. And she didn't check in with Thorax, because I have a feeling if she would have come up with a plan and told it to Thorax, Thorax could have come up with a counter and could have made a better version of the plan, because you could even do that plan without lying about it. You could have had Thorax approach his brother and go, okay, you have an alternate idea. Let's try your idea. We'll figure out the best people out of the group who actually still feel like they can work with you and let's get rid of this problem. Let's try your idea. Just because you're peaceful doesn't mean you have to fight. Okay, let's try that. <laughs> because we need to protect ourselves. So they could have tried his idea. Yes, but the thing was, they've been peaceful for long enough, and this sounds like it's the first problem they've had come up, you know, other than having a whole faction of changelings who didn't want to change, which was the last problem we heard about, that okay, they haven't had to worry or think about defense. So during the entire time where everyone is making this transition, Ferex is being, in their minds, obnoxious. By the time the creature came around, they were all done with him. There was no way any of them were going to listen to him at this point. I'm just saying it's an alternate way they could have done it, especially if Starlight and Trixie brought this plan to him after Starlight thought of the plan. Yes, there, there needed to be some more coordination here. So you have lots of things here of be careful where you step in, don't give up on people, that being gentle doesn't mean you can't defend yourself, and that just because something is old or new doesn't make it any better or worse. It's the content, not where it came from. But then you also have this whole conformity thing of, Oh, he's the only changeling who hasn't changed, therefore mm -hmm. we don't like him. And by the end of the episode, yay, now he's like everybody else. Well, not really. He just happens to now look similar to them. Yes, yeah, so we're a bunch of changelings, but we can't have any changes that keep you being different from us. Yeah, it's kind of a problem that runs throughout MLP, kind of like, that's kind of pointed out or hammered in a little bit in the first movie, the first Equestria Girls movie. Let's all be the same. It's actually in the song. <laughs> because I think it would have kind of been cool if he could have stayed his original changeling self because they accepted him right before his transformation. So it would have been kind of neat. And he's a changeling. He could have changed his appearance to outwardly look like them if he felt like it, and then go out on patrol looking like a regular changeling self. And so could the others. When they're on patrol, you change into the biggest, scariest looking thing you can think of. Or make it look like you're a bunch of tiny things, but a lot of tiny things. I'm not sure that the transformations could work like that. Well, I'm thinking they could maybe work together. I know it's individual transformations, but maybe they could come up with something where they could like make illusions that look like a lot of little things. Because who knows? Maybe changing magic could also be used for illusions. We don't know, because apparently once they make the transformation, they don't do much with magic, because almost everything we've seen with the transform changelings has been mundane, not magical. Mm-hmm. 
Well, except for Thorax. Though, that makes me wonder, can the other changelings still transform? Especially with the way that one was talking about, sometimes I feel like this and sometimes I feel like that. Because we only saw one other changeling transform so far, and that was Ferrix. And that was before he was converted to the other type of changeling. Mm -hmm. So did the normal changelings lose their power and only Thorax and maybe his brother still have it? Or when that one changeling was talking about the colors and the changeling that was leading the group said, you don't have to choose. You can be either, you can be both. And then she went back and said, but then I'd be living a lot. You're a changeling. You can literally be whatever you want. Yes, I know we said this earlier in our episode. Yep, but we're coming back to it because of how things are going. So, yeah, it's a valid question because we've only seen Thorax change. So can the others still change? Because if they could, why didn't they do it during the fight? Mm-hmm. Oh, and speaking of that fight, when they s suddenly said, like, we need something to fight itself, I'm like, so are we going to have one of the changelings, I don't know, transform into one? Because <sighs> that's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, Thorax, because he's the biggest one and probably most powerful, is going to transform into that. And then, no. I'm like, so we're going back to the hitting yourself story. That's a nice tie back and everything, but it would have been so much cooler if Thorax transformed into one and started punching him. Yeah, because Garrix always saw Thorax as weak, so for Thorax to transform and take on this creature... And beat it without his help would have been, oh, my brother finally grew up. Because he still doesn't show any respect for him, really, even though he's the king. Yeah, so, I mean, he respects the authority of the position because he took Starlight and Trixie when he captured them straight to Thorax, but he doesn't respect Thorax as an individual. He only respects the office. Mm -hmm. He doesn't respect him as the king. He says, uh, he's the king, so I kind of have to follow him. He doesn't respect that Thorax is that position now. No. And you really want to have a story like that? Yes, Thorax was good scaring the other changelings away from picking on his brother. But then he turns around and picks on his brother himself. What kind of contradictory message is this? That the person that protects you can then turn around and bully you? I think they were trying to go for the classic thing of only I can bully you. No one else can. Which is still a horrible thing. You've never seen that in other cartoons? Where the big brother protects the younger brother and then goes, Remember, only I can bully you in a joking way. Like, yeah, I do bully you, but it's out of love kind of thing. Yeah. In the cutesy, joking way. Varys was totally not joking. Also, how many shows has that been in? Why do we still need to do it? Well, I just thought I'd bring it up because it is something that's commonly used in media. So I haven't seen it for a while, though. I don't watch a lot of shows out of MLP and... Oh, basically what we watch is what you see on this channel. Oh, if this is like, we're going to watch it. Well, we usually talk about it. May as well record it. See what the internet thinks. Apparently two people really like us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why did they leave? Come back. <laughs> uh, thank you to our wonderful viewers. All of you out there, even if you don't comment. Thank you. Now move back to the episode. Yes. And it was nice that the two of them were working together to trick the creature and make it miss its hits because you had... A slightly similar thing in The Incredibles. The only thing that could pierce it was itself. So, yeah, nice realization, nice the brothers working together. But, man, that bite on the wrist, that that was painful. That also reminds me of Trixie in a throne room going, Wait for it! And it's heading towards the castle! Ah! There it is! <laughs> Trixie's great for those kind of jokes. Mm-hmm. She's still such a brat, though. It's kind of in her nature, and it's a good way to keep her still like the old character, but still different. I know, but freaking out in the bag going, Teleportation spell! Teleportation spell! Trixie, it doesn't work like that. Don't mess with my process! <laughs> it's kind of like, I'm calling out my attack as I punch! <laughs> the super punch punch! Punch! <laughs> 
Oh, the, there was an episode of Jackie Chan Adventures where that was awesome, though. <laughs> because the villain called out every attack as they were doing it. Oh! And then called out the wrong one, so the person didn't dodge correctly. I, I think I remember this guy. He kind of was big, orange hair. Yeah. Yep. I love that show. Also, I remember someone making, or at least working on a project where they had a crossover where Uncle ended up in the MLP world and thought everyone turned into ponies, so he had to correct it and kept thinking Twilight Sparkle was Chan. I have no idea. One more thing. Jackie! <laughs> I need to watch that show again sometime. Ah. So, wrap things up. Mm-hmm. What are your wonderful final thoughts? Well, it was nice to get out of Equestria again. It was nice to, you know, see more of another race. It was wonderful that they weren't sent as Friendship Ambassadors. Because we already have Pinkie Pie as a Friendship Ambassador. Spike as a Friendship Ambassador. I'm like, please do not turn everyone into Diplomatic Ambassadors. Mm-hmm. I think the only reason Spike was a French ambassador is because he heard Pinkie Pie ask for it and wanted to be one himself. Mm hmm So, I, yeah, I like this episode. It was a fun little romp into how bad Starlight and Trixie can get themselves deep into a problem. And only by accident get themselves out. Yeah, he was like, uh, yeah, technically this did work. That's not the point. Um, can we overlook that? Hey, did you ever hear the story about how he used to make Thorax hit himself? No, I'd love to. <laughs> like, right this second. Please, go on. Continue. Distract people from my stupidity. Wait a minute. Oh, well, moving on. <laughs> love this episode. Can't wait for the next ones. I've been avoiding spoilers like crazy. And thank you, Sasami-chan, for that wonderful comment in the last video. I know. I can't believe you posted spoilers like that. How are we supposed to go to DeviantArt now? <laughs> really, meatball sub. <laughs> uh. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 17, To Change a Changeling. Well, I hope you've liked our episode. Um, considering you've made it this far, thank you. If you want to see more, we have plenty of other videos in playlist form for your convenience. We also have a different program we run on Wednesdays called Ember's Reading Room. It's a wonderful little romp into childhood memories and books. And memories of books. And if you like us, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. Please share, like, all the usual YouTube things. If you like my art, you can visit me on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and a couple of Mastodon servers. Just look for Luxbrush. You should be able to find me. Except my name is actually kind of hard to search for. Sorry about that. I thought it was unique when I picked it at the time. If you want to help support this channel, or just my art, please visit our Patreon or Coffee. Patreon starts at a dollar, Coffee starts at three. Thank you for listening. And this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Was Magic, Season 6, Saiga Baga. Season 7, episode 17, To Change a Changeling. And no, I didn't record this after the fact because I forgot to do it. Ah. Uh, Fan of the Gourmet is right. We should just laminate the outro. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Guessing you might have enjoyed this if you're still here, or did you just skip ahead to see the final image? If you did enjoy, please like, subscribe, share, check out other videos, we did some playlists, you know, autoplay keeps going. Lots of content without a lot of effort. Well, on your part. <laughs> if you'd like to see more of Lux's art, you can find it on Tumblr, DeviantArt, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, a couple Mastodon servers. Those pictures stay still. You can stare at them and study all the intricate line work. Or maybe not that close. I'm not sure Lux could handle all the nitpicking. <laughs> I accept creative criticism, just not, I hate this, or, this is wonderful. This is wonderful is nice, but I would like some more. <laughs> like, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Why does a particular line, color, pose work or not work for you? 
really like Lux's art, you could probably get some of your own. Uh, try asking over on the commission page. Like us and willing and able to toss a few coins our way? Yes, I know, coins kind of a relative term in this digital age. Uh, we have Patreon and Ko-fi. Uh, Patreon starts at a dollar, Ko-fi works in increments of three. Thank you for listening.